Hello, my name is Thomas Lowe, and I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a landscape designer here. Uh, today's title is Building a Small Landscape Retaining Wall. Uh, one of the first things to think about is what type of material, uh, maybe budget, that you want to, uh, to do when it comes to um, building a small landscape retaining wall. I'll be talking about uh, three different um, styles. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, one that is, is really popular. This is a prefabricated um, landscape block. There's a lot of different names for this. Allen block, Windsor wall, castle block, landscape block. Uh, they're designed on the, the bottom of them where there's a lip and it actually locks into place so that it won't fall forward. Um, so the first thing when installing this uh, landscape block is know that these are 12 inches across and they're four inches thick. So this really uh, makes calculating a lot easier uh, when you're trying to figure out how many to buy. Um, obviously if you want a, a, a 30 foot long wall um, you'd buy 30 of those and um, if you wanted it a uh, foot tall you'd buy uh, uh, three of those high, so um, they're, you know they're easy to, to calculate because they're four inches thick and 12 inches across. Now, um, I also recommend, and as talked about in some of the other videos, this is a great landscaping tool. It's a, a rectangle shovel with a flat end. Um, uh, first of all, what you'd need to do is to figure out where you want your wall. Go in with some spray paint. Um, or some sand and make a line and then you'd want to go in and you want to trench down in the ground at least an inch and dig out a lot of your dirt and pile behind this because you actually use this to backfill to use this dirt behind this retaining wall. So once you've established where the wall goes and you've dug out a, an area, uh, recommend this uh, rectangle shovel is great in many different uh, jobs. What you'd need to do is, is go in and it makes it easier if you use uh, some paver sand. Um, depending on the size of the wall, you're going to need several bags um, of paver sand. They're sold in um, anywhere from 40 to 60 pound bags. So you take your, your paver sand and you go in and you would just dump maybe an inch to two inch layer of paver sand in your trough. Um, that way it's a lot quicker and a lot easier to level these blocks. Um, I recommend when you level these blocks to use a string um, or even just a really long um, uh, level that actually sits on the blocks to level these. Uh, and the sand also, that way you can use the sand um, to level the blocks. You can also use this gardening trial to move the sand about to make the sand a little less or make it a little more so that the blocks are adjust to the right height so that it is level. It is very important that you get these uh, blocks level. They don't have to be perfectly level but, but pretty close so that as you're building up several more blocks height it doesn't look off. Also so that um, these landscape blocks are adjusted properly in the front, measure this little triangle that's created when you set the blocks on here. Um, if it's the right width, then you know that the wall is not going to look curved as you build a, a longer wall. So once you go in and you set this here, you can use the garden trial. Then you'd measure the back to get it really close to the same width. Then once the lower level is level, then it becomes a lot less um, tedious to do. It becomes a little easier. Then you go back and remember, this actually has a lip on the back. You, actually, you go back and you stagger the blocks. and you, you pull it forward a little bit so it's snug. Also, you wanna make sure that the middle of this 
block is right in the seam so that when you get to the end of your row, it's really close. Now, if you get to the end of your row and one of these blocks is overhanging, you can use a masonry saw to cut the end um, of the piece. Now also, once you get the, everything built on the top, or you get to your, your very last block, rather, uh, if you only did too high or too tall, there also is a cap that is sold. So this cap actually just goes on the top of the block. And you'd also want to stagger this cap. This is called a cap. See, that way if you stagger this piece, and also some people choose to have it flush. Most people tend to have to do an overhang. And if you do an overhang this on here, then what happens is it creates a little bit of a shadow. So aesthetically you have more of a, a line that's on there. Now, one uh, material that I use to at least fasten this cap to the last retaining block uh, is constructive construction adhesive. Uh, this construction adhesive um, is sold in home centers. You cut the end of this off. There's a little membrane in here you puncture. And this is a, a caulk gun. You just take the caulk gun and just put like maybe three quarter size droppings on here. And then go back and you take the cap and you, you put onto here. It takes um, a couple days to really dry a firm. I mean, you, uh, you could move it maybe in a day, but I would wait at least two to four days before you start to sit on this wall or move it around a lot. Once this wall is built up, then you come back with some topsoil and backfill right behind it. Uh, another approach to uh, building or choosing a small landscape retaining wall um, is using old railroad timbers. Uh, a lot of these are sold uh, as um, landscape timbers uh, for retaining walls, small retaining walls or tall retaining walls. Uh, this is uh, probably a little bit less expensive than the, the uh, prefabricated blocks I talked about a little earlier. Uh, the way to install the landscape timbers is first of all, as you can see here, you would want to go in and dig down in the ground these uh, aren't exact the same thickness. They're within a few inches of being the same thickness. But you'd want to dig down um, at least halfway to almost 80% down in the ground to establish a good foundation. Then you can go back with another landscape timber and put right on top of the base landscape timber. Uh, also, uh, the, the joints that are, that are in here you may want to make sure that there's not also a seam or a joint in between the one below. Uh, you want to stagger these joints. So if I was going to build a wall that was one more timber taller than this, I would actually build the timber over this joint. So it becomes locked in a little bit stronger. Now, the way to hold these together so these don't move, two ways to go about it. You can use a large landscape nail that you can get in most any home centers. Um, one problem with the, 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 the nails is they may not be long enough to go all the way through to attach to the timber below. So in that case, I highly recommend uh, this uh, rebar. This is called rebar, it's a steel rod. Now, the way to install this uh, rebar or steel rod is to choose a heavy duty drill and you'll want the drill bit it's very, very important. You want the drill bit to be the same size, preferably a little bit smaller, the drill bit to be smaller in diameter than this rebar or steel bar. That way, this rebar goes in with a really tight fit and it makes the overall wall much more secure. Uh, and also, you would want to drill. Some of these timbers have little holes in them, so you'd want to you know, get more of the, the thicker part of the timber. So you drill the hole right in the, not here on the edge or here, but in the center, 
Then you would go back in that hole and then take a small sledgehammer, not a hammer, a hammer will take too long, a small sledge um, or even a medium sized sledgehammer and start hammering this and then just hammer this spike all the way through till this is actually flush with the top of this. That way if you put another retaining wall or another um, landscape timber on top that it, it's flush. Um, another wall that we'll talk about is the uh, stone wall. Uh, stone walls are much more intricate to build. Um, it's uh, maybe a little challenging for homeowners to build these walls. Uh, so if you have this bitted out, these are generally more expensive to build than your um, uh, block retaining walls or your landscape uh, timber retaining wall. Um, and the way to go about uh, building a small uh, field stone, some people call this field stone, uh, gray field stone, is the first thing that's the most important thing to do when building um, a flagstone wall is you need to dig down at least four to eight inches below this to go in and, and pour a concrete foundation. And you'll need to let the foundation set up for several days so that it cures and it's set up enough to hold the weight of the stone. Uh, the next piece you'll need to do is to pick out stones um, that usually the, the more consistent in thickness the better but you know there are st uh, natural stones they're not going to be perfect so what you need to do is is go in and pick out what nice stones that you would want to sit in here you can be really artistic with this and put in uh, unique pieces of stone, have some fun with it, uh, with the different colors and different sizes. And then you would, once you poured your foundation, you would go back in and put in some concrete blocks uh, on the foundation. And it's important that you dig the foundation wide enough to encompass the, the four inch or eight inch thick cinder block. Then you would want to make sure that you have the proper depth stone so that it encompasses the width of the foundation. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect because you want to have a little bit of a gap between so that you can pour concrete. Now, once you poured your foundation, set your concrete blocks, and then gone in, I recommend not building up all at once, but building all the way across then going back to the end, building across again, going back and building across. That way, it builds a lot more securely if you do that. And then once you build up about halfway, there's a pocket between the cinder block and the stone. You can pour concrete for extra security. Uh, also, this is a cap similar to the uh, cap on the uh, Allen block wall that we talked about earlier, you may want to put a cap on top as well. Uh, and also, retaining walls that are built anywhere from about 18 to 24 inches are great for a sitting height, so you can also make it multifunctional for uh, like a sitting wall. I hope this uh, video has been some help for you, and uh, thank you very much. Have a great day. My name is Thomas Lowe, and I'm a landscape designer in Atlanta, Georgia.